Three, two, one. It's game week as your Seattle Seahawks take on the Carolina Panthers. Coming up on today's show, we'll tell you everything you need to know. Go over the injury report, get you keys to victory for your Seattle Seahawks, as well as a look at the uh, also my official prediction. All of that and more in just a few moments from right now. Before we do, if you want to beat the Panthers, here's what I need you to do. Like today's video. I have been told that... The more likes we get on today's video, the Seahawks have a better chance of winning on Sunday. So don't be the guy that jinxes it and is the reason why the Seahawks lose. Here's the deal. We get enough likes, the Seahawks win. That's how it works. So don't take any chances. Just go ahead and smash the like button on today's video if you want to see the Seahawks win. <clears throat> the Seahawks take it on the Carolina Panthers. Seattle comes in with a 7-5 record taking on a Carolina Panthers team that stands at 4-8 on the season. And when you look at this Seattle team here, they walk in off the win against the Rams, a much-needed win, but you take on a Panthers team that has been so bad this year, but they have still played spoiler at points this year. They have two wins against teams the Seahawks lost to, the Atlanta Falcons and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So this feels like... A trap game, potentially, for Seattle. The Seahawks enter as a four-point favorite. Not a big favorite by any means, but a favorite nonetheless. And the over-under is currently at 43-and-a-half. So, get your bets in now. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Seahawks125. And you will get a 125% deposit bonus. You put $100 down, you get $125 to spend for free. Go to chatsports.com slash bet. Get your bets in. You can bet on this game as well between your Seahawks and the Carolina Panthers. Let me know in the comments section. What's your bet going to be? You're riding with the Seahawks or you're going with the Panthers? Who you got if you're picking Seattle? Type S-E-A for Seattle. If you're going with the Panthers, type C-A-R for the Panthers. Let me know in the comments section below. C for Seattle. C-A-R for the Carolina Panthers. Now, let's go ahead and get to some injury news for your Seattle Seahawks. We start with the feature running back for the Seahawks offense. That is Kenneth Walker III. And at the time of this taping, his status is still up in the air for Sunday with the ankle strain that he suffered in the win against the Los Angeles Rams. Now, here's a few things to look at. Kenneth Walker and DJ Dallas, they did not practice uh this uh, past uh, Wednesday. And then you also had Ryan Neal with knee soreness. He was out. And then Tony Jones and Travis Homer, your two other running backs, those guys did practice. The current injuries from the running back position right now include Kenneth Walker and DJ Dallas with ankle injuries, Travis Homer with a knee injury. So something to keep in mind with those guys is what status is it going to be for those guys and how much can you actually get out of your run game. Then there's Josh Jones, and he's going to miss at least four games with a hamstring injury. Could return by week 18 for the final week of the regular season. And Ryan Neal, who would be in his place, as we mentioned, he's coming off an injury himself. So this team got to watch for what they do about the running back position and the safety spots on the injury front. Four players coming off IR and PUP. That includes Isaiah Dunn, Tyler Ott, Alton Robinson, and John Radigan. Unlikely any of those guys play, but guys to keep in mind uh, here in the near future that we should see back on the football field, hopefully sooner rather than later. So now let's go ahead and get to my keys to a Seahawks victory. What's it going to take to get the job done against Carolina? Number one, I mean, it feels obvious with what we just talked about. Next man up at the running back position. Look, it's not ideal what the Seahawks are dealt with this running back situation. And when you look at Rashad Penny and Kenneth Walker, who were the two leading backs for this Seahawks team, when Penny, of course, out, uh, has been for a while, could be back by the end of the year, and then Kenneth Walker with the injury that he just suffered this past weekend, they've accounted for 71% of Seattle's rushing offense. And then after that, your next leading rusher is Geno Smith. 
So there is a big gap at that point of who could lead the running game for this Seattle team. You haven't had guys that you've seen be consistent, to step up, that have been trusted enough to be that next option. So you already have these injury issues, and then you haven't found a piece you've necessarily felt comfortable with of getting more of that load when it comes to the rushing game. You have a couple options potentially you could activate from the practice squad. In addition to Jones at that number four spot, we could see potentially Darwin Thompson or Wayne Gallman get the call up by Sunday. But as of right now, this is the situation as it, it, it stands, Tony Jones, your only healthy running back. How confident are you in the Seahawks running game? With all things considered, remember, they hadn't rushed the football that well the last few weeks to begin with. And now you walk into this situation shorthanded at the running back position. How confident are you in this running back position that things are going to be okay? Let me know in the comments section. Scale it for me, 1 through 10. Number two in our keys to victory against the Panthers is stopping the run. Now, for Carolina, Deontay Foreman is expected to play after suffering a foot and rib injury. He uh, said just a couple days ago that he feels about 95% at this point. So with that, as much of a disaster that the Carolina Panthers have been in 2022, the one silver lining has been their run game. And in their wins, all four wins they've had this year, they have run the ball very well. Most recently against Denver, 46 times they pound the rock and had 185 yards rushing in one touchdown. They moved on from Christian McCaffrey, but then didn't slow down the run game. Week 10 had 232 yards and two touchdowns against Atlanta. Tampa Bay had 173 yards and a touchdown run. Week 3 against New Orleans had 31 carries and 145 yards, no touchdowns. McCaffrey was on the team back then. And it's well known that the Seahawks did not look great against the Raiders when it came to stopping the run. So... Put it simply, you stop the run, you win. That's how Carolina wins football games, is by paddling the rock and running the football. You stop the run, you win, you get the job done. Number three, winning on third and short. The Seahawks have struggled in dealing with teams when it comes to third and short. And listen to this. The Seahawks defense have allowed first downs on 88% of pass attempts on third and short. That's the worst in the entire NFL. So to put it in simplest terms here, when the Seahawks get into a situation where it's third and short, teams are just throwing it on them, and they're getting the first down a lot, essentially, here. So it's not great for Seattle when it comes to that front here. So with that, you got to sure up the pass defense on third and short and not allow those opportunities. Got to win on third down, in particular on third and short. Fill in the blank for me. Who will be the Seahawks MVP against the Carolina Panthers? If you had to give me one name, who is it? Who is the guy to watch for against Seattle? Whether it's on offense, whether it's on defense, maybe it's a special teamer. Let me know in the comments section. Fill the blank. The MVP for the Seahawks on Sunday will be who? Tell me in the comments section below. And make sure to join us for our watch party this Sunday against the Carolina Panthers. We will get things started just before... 4 o'clock Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific for our Seahawks versus Carolina Panthers watch party. We'll do a little pregame show, then we'll react to the game in real time. We will also do our live postgame show. We'll have a few drinks in hand as well. It will be quite a dandy that we have in store for you this weekend. Join us on Sunday. Subscribe now, youtube.com slash Seahawks TV, and you'll be glad you did. Number four. Let Geno cook. I know that we joked about that for a long time with Russell Wilson, but here's the deal. Let Geno cook. We have seen that Geno Smith has played solid the last, you know, several weeks, really all season for that matter. He's only had a couple bad games. But with the run game not being at its best within the last couple of weeks, Geno Smith has done what he's needed to do. He has answered the call. And with knowing where the running back situation is for Seattle this week, it is vital that this Seahawks team puts the game in Geno Smith's hands 
and lets him do his thing. You look at the last five weeks against the Rams, 367 yards, three touchdown passes. Against the Raiders, 328 yards, two touchdowns in that game. Against Tampa Bay, 275 yards, two touchdowns. Arizona, 275 as well and two touchdowns. And then against the Giants, 212 yards and two touchdowns. Let Geno do his thing. Let him command this offense and throw it around. He's obviously comfortable with this receiving core. He's doing what's asked of him and then some. There's no reason to back off now from let Geno doing his thing. So for me, with knowing where the run game's at, you have to trust Geno Smith, and hopefully uh, he can do his thing and just take over this Seattle Seahawks offense and continue to lead the charge, even with the shortage at the running back position in the run game. Last one on my keys to victory for Seattle. Creating hell for Sam Darnold. Hell yeah, okay? Look, Sam Darnold, let's, let's all be honest here. Things have not gone well for Sam Darnold in his NFL career. He had a good start last week in his first game back uh, against Denver, uh, his first game this season. But Sam Darnold has been, quite frankly, a bust in his NFL career. It did not go well with the Jets. And last year, his first year in Carolina, when they handed him the keys, only had nine touchdowns and 13 interceptions. Um, Sam Darnold's been very inconsistent, has not been accurate, whether it's getting the pass rush on him, whether it's, you know, throwing some confusing coverages with zone and, and all of that stuff there. For me, I, I'm looking at this and, you know, before we get to our score prediction for this game and ask you what you guys think about that, I want you to look at these numbers from Sam Darnold and you can see that where these numbers are at with Sam Darnold, he has been such a problem. And I know that we've seen, you know, P.J. Walker at times. Uh, for me, I look at Sam Darnold, we were told that Sam Darnold's good to go, and then he's starting this week, that the Seahawks just need to play at their best, and they can give Sam Darnold a hard time all around. So with that, before we get out of here and give you my score prediction, Correct the score for me in the comments section. How will things work out for your Seattle Seahawks? Will they get the win? What will the final score be? Let me know in the comments section below. Correct the score, and uh, I'll give you my prediction here in just one moment. My pick, I like Seattle big. Carolina is not very good. I know that Seattle's had their difficulties with the run game the last couple of weeks, and they are a little shorthanded at the running back spot, but I believe Seattle gets it done here. I like this one. Uh, to be a really strong showing that this is a a statement, a confidence win for Seattle. I'll take the Seahawks 31 to 10. As always, you can interact with me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Tyler Jones Live. And I'll see you next time right here on Seahawks Today.